Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Hello! <laughs> Welcome to today's Saturday with Stacy class. It is a doozy of a class for many reasons. First, this is a do's and don'ts class of the Sizzix stamp and spin tool. I have the tool here with me. I am going to walk you through it. It's going to be a comprehensive class on how to use this tool. Why to use it, when to use it, how not to use it. But before we get into all of that, we have other things to talk about. First off, I hit a million subscribers on YouTube. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I put out a video and thank you everybody, everybody who contributed. Really, it couldn't have happened without you. Like literally, it couldn't have happened without you. So heartfelt thanks and gratitude. And if you have a chance, please go back and watch the video that I put out when we hit 1 million. So that means this is the week where you post where you leave a comment and you gotta like the video too. If you're gonna leave a comment, you gotta like the video too. <laughs> you leave a comment and we are going to give away $1,000 in gift cards. $1,000 and then I tap out. That Then I tap out. <laughs> so the way this works is you have to post a comment below. Live chat does not count. You have to leave a comment that is kind below and all you have to say is how you'd like us to divvy up the gift card. If you post, you want one person to win all thousand dollars and it is you who are our generator picks. They, they select your number. You just want a thousand dollars to scrapbooking made simple. But if you put two people for $500 and you are who the random generator selects, well, you've won $500 and then we tell it to select one more winner and you've become somebody's best friend. Or if you put five people for $200, you'll win the $200 and then we'll select four more. Or if you want 10 people for $100, it's all up to you. We leave it in your capable hands and the powers of the software to decide. <laughs> but remember, live chat comments don't count. You have to post below. And if you're going to post a comment, you have to like the video too. Okay, fair, fair, right? So that's a big event for us here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, but of course we have winners from last week. Now they didn't win $1,000, but they did win $25, and hey, free is free. So I have two winners from last week that I get to announce, and hopefully they'll be as excited as we are for them. They won from YouTube 548, which was the Creative Expressions 3D embossing folders with the masks. Ooh, pretty, they were so pretty. Our first winner winner is Christy. Christy Quinn. Hello, Christy Quinn. How are you doing? Congratulations to you. Well done. Good job. $25. Wahoo could you. But you're not alone. We always pick two. Our second winner is Mardell. Mardell Obermiller. Hello. How are you doing, Mardell? Is that you? Because if it is, congratulations. You also have become a winner winner chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. And there is $25 in your online account all waiting for you. Go spend it on anything that makes your heart happy because that makes our heart happy and free is free. So now I get to do the winner winner chicken dinner dance for these two. Next week, I, I think I should have a band behind me playing the winner winner chicken dinner dance, a thousand dollars in gift cards. But for now, let's let's celebrate these two, Mardell and Christy, and you're a winner, chicken dinner, you're a winner, chicken dinner, wahoo, cut you for you. Congratulations to the both of you. You don't have to do anything to claim your prize. All you have to do is log in and have fun. Next week, next week, there could be one winner. There could be 10 winners. I don't know what we're, I am not doing a hundred winners. 
no. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. So we're going to keep it reasonable. And, um, and who knows? Could be one winner for $1,000. Oh my gosh. Now today, today I have got, I've got Sizzix for you. And this is a do's and don'ts video. And for those of you who are not familiar with my do's and don'ts videos, I usually only do them for tools. I have done several for Big Shot machines as it has evolved over the years. I've done it for the Switch machine and it really is a comprehensive class on the tool because tools are an investment. It's something that you you add to your collection and you should be able to use forever and ever, or at least ever. <laughs> so when the, the stamp and spin tool was announced, I was interested. Yep, absolutely. Wanted to play with it, but I didn't want anybody's I didn't want anybody to tell me what I was supposed to do with it. I'm that kind of girl. I don't want to know how it's supposed to work. I just want you to hand it to me. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to see what's intuitive. And if what's intuitive isn't the way it's supposed to go, well, I want to tell you that. Or if it is so intuitive, you don't even have to think twice about it. I want to tell you that as well. I will say that Sizzix has absolutely no idea what I'm going to do today. They have no pull or opportunity to share how they'd like me to present this product. That's how it works here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. I decide what I want to YouTube. I present it the way I think uh, that it should be presented. Sometimes it's showing the good, the bad, and the ugly. Manufacturers have zero say over what I do with their product. I am not paid by a manufacturer to do a YouTube. It is strictly mine. <laughs> so, so my opinions are my opinions. Other, other YouTubers or teachers or uh, people, crafters who, who show this tool may have different opinions and that's fine. It's usually best maybe to see a couple different ways to use something because there usually is a couple different ways to use something. But I just think it's very important that you know that Sizzix has zero say in what I do in this video. They're not paying me to do this video. I've paid for the product that has shipped to me and, and I think that they're like fingers crossed because they don't know what I'm going to say. There may be an email or two at the end when they're I'm all said and done. They they may, some you know, sometimes manufacturers will shoot an email over saying, oh my gosh, we loved your do's and don'ts class, but did you have to say? And chances are, if I said it, I had to say it. So I'm gonna get started for today and we're going to start very slowly. I may not get into stamping for a little while because the stamping part is actually the easiest part of the whole thing. I want to take the tool out and explain the tool to you so that when you get it, should you decide this is something you want to add to your crafty stash, you know you can either refer back to this class or you have a good foundation already because you watched this class. Now, I have not ever played with the Altenew stamping platform. The, the, the spinny one. And theirs is one that you lift up and you turn and you rotate. I've never ordered one. I've never played with one. I've never touched one. So I am not going to be making comparisons between the two. That would be unethical <laughs> for me to talk about something I have never used before. I am going to solely talk about the Sizzix tool. The only thing that I can say that I do know for sure is that the Sizzix Stamp and Spin tool is substantially less money than the Altenew tool. Now, is there a reason that the Altenew tool costs more? I don't know. There very well could be a very clear reason why that tool is $100. I don't know. So if you're interested in looking at the Altenew tool, I would recommend you go watch videos on that or go to the Altenew website and see 
what that tool does and why it is the price it is. I'm going to show you why Sizzix has the price they have on their tool and it is less than half of the Altenew. That is the only thing that I know for sure where I can make a comparison and tell you about it. Nothing saying that the Altenew tool is not a good tool. I don't know. But for the price difference, I would investigate before I buy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm your, I'm your investigating for the Sizzix tool, and then you'll go do some investigating for the Altenew tool. And I do know that Altenew is bringing out a bigger one. I'm going to assume the price is going to be higher, but let me show you what you can do with the Sizzix tool. And that may answer all the questions that you have. This may be the, the stamp and spin tool of choice for you and I leave that to your discretion. You make a decision, eyes wide open, fully informed, knowing that nobody has paid for my opinion. Never, not one YouTube ever. So let's get started for today. <laughs> that was a pretty big disclaimer. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna tilt on down and we're gonna get started. Now in front of me is the stencil and stamp tool. I use this all the time. I have brought it in a while ago. It is easy to use. It's meant for alignment, perfect alignment for your stencils. It's also a stamp positioner. And this tool is required. It is required to use the Sizzix stamp and spin tool. So if you already have this, wahoo kachoo, you will be ready to go with your new Sizzix stamp and spin tool. If you do not have this, you're going to have to decide whether you want to buy into this tool or not. And if you do, we have it on sale for you and we've got a rock star price for it. We always have a rock star price for it. But it is, and it is an alignment tool for perfect alignment for stencils. Absolutely, that is how, that's, that's how I primarily use this is for my stenciling so that I can do layering stenciling beautiful every time. It just so happens that it also gets to be a stamp positioner. So I'm gonna put this off to the side for now because I'm going to bring over the stamp and spin tool. Here's the box. It's shipping from Scrapbooking Made Simple, not from Sizzix. Let's open it up. Literally brand new. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Let's get the, the shrink wrap off of it. And then we have the instructions and this little piece of plastic. Do not lose this little piece of plastic. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. The instructions leave a lot to be desired. Not that Ellison didn't want or Sizzix didn't want to give you the best instructions possible, but they have to write the instructions in English and in French and in Spanish and in Italian and in, I think, Dutch. I, so, so you've got the instructions in many different languages. So they have to be pretty concise with their instructions because they have to print it so many times. They've got a little style guide over here, a little picture guide over here, but honestly, if you're going to rely on the instructions to teach you how to use this tool, don't buy it. If you are not willing to spend the time to learn how to use it, just walk on by. I See, this is one of the things where Sizzix is going to be, what did she just say? I want you to be successful with it. And as much as they tried to do the best they could on their instructions, you are going to need a tutorial on it to get the most. And I today can't even give you 
everything that we're going to be able to do. I'm going to walk you through how to use this. As we, as we grow with this and, and as product comes out with it, I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to make it shine. I'm going to take it to places that you haven't even thought it could go. But that's not today. Today is the do's and don'ts so that when you decide to order this, you know that it is exactly what you were hoping for. And you can refer back to this video and, you, and to use it again and again. Now you can see that it has the same hinge as the stencil and stamp tool. Same hinge, which means for this tool to work, you need to have the stencil and stamp tool because this takes the place of the top lid. They're interchangeable. You can take this one out and you can put this one back in. Totally interchangeable, but without having this, you cannot use this. Now, when I took it out the first time, the first thing I saw were these two little lips. See the, the little, and the first thing I thought is, oh, you open this, you pull, because it just seemed intuitive to want to wanna take these and pull this up because it's got this little lip over it. And I thought, oh, maybe you open this and somehow the stamp fits in there. No, you do not pull these apart. You do not try to lift up and pull the pieces of acrylic apart. They're meant to stay as a solid unit. It has a grid. Let's see if I grab a pea, maybe a piece of black paper will be easier to see. It has a grid. Hmm, maybe. It has a grid built into it. And that grid has dividing lines at 45 degrees and your wheel is going to spin and literally lock every 45 degrees. It's gonna spin and lock, spin and lock at every 45 degrees. For me, showing this to you on camera, I'm gonna do something that I can almost feel. This is it's going, <gasps> What is she doing? Because I need you to see as I rotate, I'm going to mark up my tool. I'm going to take a Sharpie marker and I'm going to mark it up. This tool is simplified. It's very, it, it's got weight to it, which means when you put it down, uh, on the stamp with your on your stamp platform and you press into it it already has heft helping you press into the paper so made beautifully something that is going to last the test of time I mean it is absolute quality without question and everything is dependent upon these little pies these little pies so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark this up with a Sharpie pen. Now that doesn't mean you have to mark yours up with a Sharpie pen, but I will be able to show you much clearer, much cleaner, much easier if you can see the lines. So I'm gonna take, and first I'm gonna do the bottom wheel. So it's the bottom wheel that rotates, the bottom wheel that rotates and the lines, there's a line that is on this top and then on the bottom wheel. So I'm just gonna take and do my red and rotate and mark it and rotate and mark it and rotate and mark it, rotate mark until I have them all done. So now you can see my red lines all the way around. Now this tool does not require you to make a notation of where you've started with your stamp. 
I'm only doing this so it is easier for you to see. Now I'm going to draw the lines that are on top and they are gridded so you can see them. And if I want to take this off when I'm done, I use a little hand sanitizer or some isopropyl alcohol and all of my Sharpie marker will come off. So now I'm just matching the lines on top with the lines underneath. Okay, so I have marked all the lines on the wheel that spin and those are going to line up with the lines that are on my top. Now you can see my pie. You can see each of my little pie pieces, right? Easy to see. If for some reason I don't have one exactly the way it is, well, it looks pretty good. I can take, again, just some isopropyl alcohol or some hand, san hand sanitizer and I can get it there and I can wipe it off. So if at any time you decide, oh, I think I'm going to mark mine like Stacy, but then you say, oh, you know what? I don't think I want to mark mine like Stacy anymore. You just wipe it right off and now I'm going to draw it right back on. Zoop. So I've got my pie pieces and these pie pieces are very important because that is how the wheel turns pie piece by pie piece by pie piece. There are dotted lines in several of these just to give you a, a, a centering point should you need it. So you've got perforated grid here and perforated grid here. And again, it's just to give you a centering point if you are trying to center your design on a specific piece of paper. Now again, you don't have to do this to yours, but I need you to be able to see what I'm doing. The next thing I'm going to do is take a black Sharpie marker and I have got rings all the way around. One, two, three, and then my very last outer ring. I'm going to, in black, do my rings just so I can see them. So there's one, and again, I'm not being perfect. This is just a guide. And it really is up to you if you decide to mark yours or not. So it's not perfect. So I've got it off a little bit up there. If I want to make it perfect, if I want it a little bit more concise, I can come in hand sanitizer clean it up and redraw my lines. Okay, so there's my second line and then my last. Now it's almost going to look like a bullseye when I'm done. And I don't have to draw any lines over here because there's a cutout. This is where you rotate the wheel. All right, good enough for me. And again, this is only done as a way to show you where the pie is and where the rings are. Once you see how this tool is used, it becomes very, very intuitive. Now, 
It's all based on the pie shape and how much space you have inside each ring. This is where we're going to start very simply. And you can see this little pie shape right here is small. Here, this one's a little bit wider. This one's a little bit wider. This one's a little bit wider. It narrows as it gets closer to the center. When we use the tool for the very first time, the very first time, we're gonna keep it simple, easy peasy. And we're just gonna make something that is just, just perfect, you can't get it wrong. So I'm gonna bring over some stamps. These are by Lisa Jones. And I have four sets. Well, I have three sets that were built for this and a sentiment set. We're going to start with the Sizzix product, but a little bit later on, I'm going to be using red rubber stamps with this as opposed to clear stamps. So I wanna just start so simple. I'm going to take a stamp. I'm gonna find a stamp in here that is going to fit perfectly in that little pie piece. So let me bring over Let me bring over my base tool, my stencil and stamp tool. Let me put my lid on, put my paper down, close it up, and you can see all of my markings. Now, the stamp that I have got is a cute little butterfly. And that little butterfly fits perfect in that small, the smallest little pie shape. See how it fits absolutely perfect here? If I move it up here, it's got space on either side. If I move it up here, it's got more space on either side, and all the way at the top, it has the most space. So that means when I rotate this, if I, well, I'll do it, let's do it. So let's put it all the way down at the bottom, let's open it up. Now, what are those little handles for? This, to open your tool up. I'm gonna put my little, put my little butterfly right in there. Close it up. And now I can ink. Down, press, up, I've got my first image. Now I rotate to the next click. It clicked. And I pull it. And I ink. Down I go, press, and up open and I do this all the way around. Now I haven't rotated it. I can tell you I'm about to go right over the top of the stamp that I've already done. So all I do is rotate until it clicks and down I go. Up and I, I'm going to go all the way around all eight stations. and I'm making that perfect, perfect circle. Because that stamp fits perfectly. Oh, rotate, down, up, rotate, ink,
So as you're learning about this, you're really paying attention to the size of the pie that you've got here. Oh, didn't rotate. And down. So I've now rotated all eight stations. I'm lifting up here. I'm not trying to separate these. They're meant to stay together. I'm working on my stencil and stamp platform, which has sticky grid that is holding my paper in place. Sticky grid is a piece of just a giant posty note is what it is. It's a easy tack piece of sheet of adhesive that will hold your paper in place when you put it down so it doesn't move. Now, I've done one. I moved my paper, I took it up and off, so now I don't know that I'm gonna line up anymore. Nope, I moved it. So let's grab another one and let's do it again. And you don't have to use a full sheet of paper. I'm doing it just for ease of use. I've got my stamp that fits perfectly in my little pie shape closest to my center. And let's just do it one more time. I've left a little mark. I've left a little mark because I hadn't got my stamp completely clean, but because it is a stamp positioner, it's going to be fine. It's going to line up there again, no problem. So let's just do all eight stations again. And I just put it right back in. Now, do you have to take it on and off? No. I could do it and open it and ink to the side. ink to the side and then pull it over and close for me I just tend to take it off ink and put it back it just seems faster easier for me around and then I'm going to move that little butterfly and I'm going to show you what happens when we take him to one of the other pie pieces that are a little bit bigger And I'm going to stick with the butterfly. I'll change the color of the ink so you can see the difference. All right. Done. I've got my perfect little circle, which then I can take a fanciful framelit or a die that you've got. I could pop that out if I want. I'm going to take a little bit of my baby wipe and clean up my stamp, just get my red off of it. Everything's gonna wipe up lovely, no problem. I'm using my Stacy Park Jacquard dye-based inks. And now, I'm gonna take that same stamp and I'm just gonna move him up one. So I was on the most inner ring. 
Now I'm going to move him up to the next ring. And I'm going to center him like I did before. Okay, so I've got him not in the center. I've got my beautiful design already there. I've moved him up. Let's change our ink so you can see the difference. Hmm, I guess he's pretty straight. Good enough. And let's ink him up. And down he goes. Up, rotate, one rotation. And down he goes. Can you see the amount of space that is left between him? That's because my pipe piece is a little bit bigger. And rotate and ink. rotate. So you're saying, does that mean that I can only use small stamps for the little circles? Hmm. I don't know. Let's finish this and let's keep going. So I've inked, but because that pie space has, it's a bigger piece of the pie, it has more separation in between. So does that mean you can only use small stamps in that small area? Do they have to always be here? No, no they don't. What if I took the same butterfly and I put it on the next piece of my pie? So first one was in red, second one is in blue, third one, uh, third one we'll do in maybe teal. And I have put him on one half of my pie. So I'm on my biggest pie piece, but just on half of it, because this little guy will fit on both sides. This little guy will fit on both sides. So let's ink them up and let's get going. One, and I'm going to rotate, and we're going to do all eight. And now you can really see the amount of space that's being left between. And my circle's getting larger and larger 
as I come out on my pie pieces. It is all about these pie pieces and what will fit in them or how to make something fit in them. And my last one. All right. So now you can see all the spacing. Closest to the center, tightest spacing. Next ring up, a little bit wider spacing. Next ring up, wider spacing, but I've seemed to have kept them all off to one side. Why would I do that? Because I'm going to take that butterfly stamp and now I'm going to move him to the next side of that pie piece. So he was right there, right on that pie piece. Now, I'm just going to scooch them on over. Still the same pie piece. But now, I'm just going to scooch them on over. And in fact, I could lay him down on my paper, figure out where I want him to be, and pick him up just like I would any other stamp. Let's do this one in orange. So all I did is scooch him on over. That's it, I just scooched. Same pie piece, but now I'm going to fill in that empty blank space with my orange. So it's not the stamp, not just the stamp, that dictates. It's how you use these pie pieces. And there are so many different ways to use them. Having a stamp that fits this pie piece twice allows me to fill in all of those holes. For me, it is easier to draw my grids so I can see them. You may not need that. But I can clearly see what will fit in those little pieces, those little pieces of, of this Sizzix pie that will allow me to do what it is I want to do. And I'm just doing one click turn. It's all based off of what you started with. Here we did one click, here we did one click, here we did one click, one click, one click, and then we moved our little guy over to fill in the space. Still keeping our ring. Now I may come back to, well, yeah, I might come back to this one, we'll see. I could still pull him out one more time because I have one more ring. And I betcha I could fit him maybe three times. 
Oh, it'd be tight. Tight fit for three times. But I do have one more ring that I could then find something else to add into. I may come back to this one. But let's move on to a different size stamp. This one was easy peasy because it fit the very smallest pie. And then I showed you how to pull it out and how to use it so that you can use it with all of the different size rings here. You're not, you're not limited to what this is, just this size, because it happens to just fit perfectly inside this little shape. Fit perfectly inside two of them inside this shape right here. Let's take another piece of paper and let me get another, how about maybe, how about maybe this one? All right, so, so far we've done just a simple ring. Then we use that same stamp and grew our ring. But what if you have a bigger stamp that you want to use? What if you have a larger stamp? What happens when you put a larger stamp on here? Well, let's do that. So the stamp that I have right now, the larger butterfly, it takes up two pieces of my pie. So it takes up two pieces of my pie here and extends out. Is that going to be okay? Well, let's see what happens when we do it. So I think I'm going to center it right there. So I've got it in between. So it's taking up a little bit over each. It's a little bit bigger than what we started with. Let's put down our paper and let's ink it. and down. I'll give a double ink. And down. All right, so there's my first one. Now if I rotate it just once, I want you to see that my wings are going to overlap. My wings are going to overlap. That's because my butterfly is wider than that piece of the pie all the way down at the bottom. I'm rotating it and my wings are going to overlap.
finish it out so you can see it. So I told you the rotating part, that's the easiest part of all of this. It's learning how to use these pie pieces to the best of their ability. Okay, done. Now they've all absolutely overlapped each other to where you lose. Now, some of you may be going, oh, that's really cool. And you like this look. And some of you may be going, what happened to my beautiful butterfly? It still made that perfect circle. But because, because my pie piece here is smaller than my butterfly. It extends out as I rotate it. It overlaps. Can I still use it with that small pie piece? Yes. So let me clean it and we'll ink it. And let's do Admiral Blue maybe. I haven't moved my, my butterfly. It's still on the same pie piece. And I put it down and now instead of moving it once because that's going to give me that overlap I move it twice and that's going to give me a little space in between so let's see what happens if I move it twice and I can clearly see where it's going to stamp One, two. One, two. And now I've used the bigger butterfly all the way down at the smallest ring but to make sure that it doesn't overlap I can only do four of them. If I move my butterfly out to let's say let's say the one two third ring and I line it up. It fits that third ring perfectly. It goes from line to line perfectly. That means it will make an entire circle. It is all about the playing, the sitting in front of the TV or while this video is going and taking out your stamps and learning how these simple little pie pieces make all the difference. Now here I had to rotate twice. I had to click, click, twice so that it didn't overlap. But here, 
I can do singles. Oh, I didn't get enough ink on there. we go and I can ink it up and take it all the way around and my spacing is much less my white my white sweatshirt rotate and press and it just slips right in and out of my stencil and stamp tool. And I just move it right along. So the closer in you get, and the larger the stamp is, the more space you need to leave. Here we were able to do a single rotation, rotate, lock, rotate, lock. Here, because the stamp was bigger, it was stamp, rotate, rotate, stamp, rotate, rotate. But when we moved it up higher in our pie, we were able to go back to one, 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 one. Then there is the opportunity to change the rotation of the stamp. So here, this is where we did it and it overlapped because the stamp was too big for the smallest area. And here it is where we separated. We stamped, rotate, rotate, stamp, rotate, rotate, stamp. But here, because the stamp fit that pie piece better, we stamped, rotate, stamp, rotate. It really is honestly very, very simple. Then we could change the rotation of our stamp. Here I've got a big butterfly. Now, if I put it this way, all the way down towards the bottom, again, it extends past. We're going to have to rotate it a couple times before we can stamp again. So let's do that. So let's see what happens. I've got it all the way down towards the bottom. I'm going to do a double stamp because these stamps are new and haven't been broken in. Because it is a true stamp positioner, 
it lines up. Now I'm going to rotate. If I rotate once, my wings are going to they're going to cover, they're going to hit each other and crisscross. If I rotate twice, I have clear space to stamp. Once it's going to overlap, twice I've got clear space. And because the lid is see-through, before you put it down, you're going to know where it is you're stamping. And if that's what you're trying to achieve, one, two. Not enough ink there. All right, so now I've got a four. This one made a cute little circle. The stamp was smaller. This one almost makes a box because the stamp was larger and I was using it all the way towards the bottom. But what if we change the rotation of the stamp? And instead of it going, instead of it going this way, I changed the rotation this way. Now that almost fits really nice in our whole entire pie shape. That fits pretty darn good, I have to say. So let's, let's ink it. Let me line it up, see if I'm happy with that. It's almost to the edge of my paper. I think I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit more. Okay, let's ink it up and let's see what we get. And because it's contained into basically one pie piece, I'm gonna try and do a single, a single rotation and see if it doesn't overlap. So one. Hmm. Two, and I'm just going to do my single rotation because it's taking up just one of the pie pieces. Now it's taking up the entire pie piece, but it still is contained inside my red lines. It's not spilling out. It's not spilling over. Now this is the fundamentals of this tool. This is so you understand how these pie pieces will make a difference in what your finished look is. And just that simple rotation, the wheel turns on its own, easy to do, it clicks into place.
and my last one. Now that is a completely different look. than what we did here. By changing the orientation, I was able to get a full circle with a very small center. Full circle, very small center, as opposed to this orientation all the way down towards the bottom, which it left me lots and lots of space. And then, if I came back with the same butterfly, and let's pull my paper up. Same butterfly, totally different looks. If we go apples to apples to apples, now I can lift my butterfly closer to the top. I'm going to do the same orientation I did here. So not, not fluttering by, and you can see he fits right in between my two red pie piece places. And now I can line it up. Ink it up. Rotate, and because I'm in between these two pie pieces, I can get away with a single rotation. If you give yourself about an hour to sit here and play, and right now we're just doing the very, very basics. You will be able to master this tool. Put my finger in there. without any problem. But without understanding the concept of the pie pieces and how the alignment works inside those pie pieces, and it's not doing math, we're not calculating anything, we're just playing inside the pie pieces and when we step outside those pie pieces a little bit, we know we have to leave a little bit more room, so we may have to click over one, maybe sometimes two, so that they don't overlap. Unless you like the overlapping, and then go for it. And I'm done. 
So I started with this one where I put the butterfly as close as I could around my smallest, my smallest pie pieces. Then I went here and I changed the orientation of my butterfly so that it was sideways and it connected this way. Then I moved my butterfly up on my pie piece to where the wings were in between two of my red lines telling me I just need to do one click and one click gave me this. It's all in how you use the tool. There's no right and there's no wrong. It just is. You just sit down and you figure out what size stamp you're using and how you want it to look. So, so far, so far we just did a very simple one. Then I showed you how you can take that very simple one and how you pull it out on those pie pieces will determine the spacing in between and how to make it if it fits, if the stamp will fit a larger pie piece, double it. I stamped all my green and then I came back and I stamped all my orange. Then we did a larger stamp, to, well, we did, we did a larger stamp at the bottom where we did a single click and you can see it overlapped everywhere. We did that same stamp and we did a stamp and then click, click, stamp, click, click, stamp, click, click, stamp to give me four, which allowed for spacing. But I moved that stamp up to a larger pie piece and I was able to do all eight stations. Then we took a really big stamp. And we did it as close to the center. You can see the center circle right there. I've got my four butterflies because I had to do stamp, click, click, stamp. So it had to take two clicks to get it over, two clicks to get it over. Otherwise, it would have overlapped there. It would have overlapped there. It would have overlapped there. Now, maybe if I'm using a different color ink, I might like that. It's possible. Then we changed the rotation of the butterfly. And then we went back to a regular, we went back to the standard butterfly and we took it all the way out to where we could get all eight clicks. It really is learning how to utilize the spacing that's inside each of these pie pieces because each one of those pie pieces represents a click. Represents a click. And for me, having them drawn out is an easy way for me to see what I can do and how I need to get it done. Let's say if we went with, let's take, let's take our little fruit guy. So I've got a little lemon here. And I'll do my lemon. I'm going to do him all the way towards the bottom. So I can see he's going to take up two spaces, two spaces towards the bottom. So one, he's taking here, so two clicks towards the bottom. Am I happy with him there?
okay, let's give it a whirl. And I think I'll do this one in black. So ink up. And down. And it's in between two. So I know I'm going to have to go one. Because if I stamp it right there, it's going to layer right over the top. But if I move it one more click, I've got clear space ready to go. So let's ink it again. Two. And I need to go click, click to where I have clear margins. Three. And click, click. Four. So now I've got my little lemons going on. And you say, but that doesn't look like anything. What would I do with this? Well, once you have established your main center, your main wreath, your main circle, now, now you can come in and you look at that negative space and you decide what to fill it with. Let's see, I could take, I could take a little strawberry, tiny little strawberry. And because I've got negative space right here, I've got negative space right there. I can put my strawberry there. It doesn't matter where it lines up. I've already done my, I already know I need to do two clicks. So every time I do something here inside this little circle, it's going to be two clicks. Let's get my strawberry and let's get it red. Close it up. I'm looking for negative space, empty space that I now want to fill up. One, rotate, rotate. Two, I pushed too hard there. Ink up. Rotate, rotate, down. Rotate, rotate, and ink up for the last time. Down. And now I've started to fill in space. So if I take my little strawberry and I put it away and my little lemon I put away and I bring over, how about a bigger strawberry? Now again, I don't have to line it up inside one of my little pie pieces. I just have to decide where I want it here. I think there looks cute. So if I pick that up. And I ink. And I put it down. 
and I lift up. And remember, how many clicks did it take me to do these? It took me two. So one. And if I were to put this down on top, I would see, oh no, that's gonna land on top of my lemon. All I have to do is click to the next station. Click. It's foolproof. Once you know how to use your pie pieces. Your pie pieces are for your first circle. After that, you can start filling in all the negative space. Two clicks. Two clicks in between here, so I have to have two clicks here. And then two clicks. And now I've made an actual square. I made a square. What if you don't want a square? What if you want to keep it roundy? Okay. Let's go find another piece that's going to fill in this, fill in this area to get me back to round. Take off my strawberry. Let's wipe my tool down. Let's find something that's going to give me the availability to something that I can do two of. Let's see if two of these will work. So let's see which one that fits in. Maybe I just want it for this. Maybe I do like that longer one. Let's ink it and see what happens. I'm just playing with the negative space now. One, and then um, let's do a double stamp just to get it nice and dark. Well, there we go. And then click, click, because I've been doing twos, I just start to fill everything in. Click, click. Click, click. and I'm filling in negative space until I'm happy. Now I have to decide, do I wanna click once? It'll land on my strawberry. 
but maybe I'm okay with that. Or maybe do I want to do something different? What do I want to fill this, or do I, maybe I don't want to fill this space in. I feel like I need to fill a little more space. Hmm. What do I have here? I have a pretty leaf. No, not another strawberry. That looks too small. I don't know what I want to fill it in with. Maybe I should just leave it. See what happens if I do that. So if I click there, nope, that's not going to work. So I put a small one in there, but when I rotated it, it lands right on top of the other. That won't work. That's kind of pretty. Okay, so I'm filling up more space. I put this one kind of at a turn. I've moved it two clicks to make sure everything's gonna line up because I need a it needs to be a two click. So let's go ahead. Let's go there and then click, click, and let's ink it. And press, and then two clicks. One, two. That leaves me negative space. It leaves me an open area to stamp. Three, and then four. And then I'm going to move it to here. Put it down. I think that's where I want it. I'm lining it up where I think I want it. Put it down. And again, it's a two click because my first, my first lemons were double clicks. I told you it's a little weighted. <laughs> One, two, ink it up. One, two, ink 
shake it up. One, two, and ink it up. And it just slips right back in. You don't have to click the lid in. It pops in and out. Right on down, give a press. There is definitely some weight here to it. And I'm filling in my space. It all starts with the very, very first circle that you do, the first wreath that you did. And remember, this was a square. I could have left it a square. I could trim it out, do whatever makes my heart happy. Let's see if we go back. What if we go back to this one? And let's add, let's add Where did that cute little one go? Hmm. What if I did that? Let's see what that looks like. So I'm not worrying about where I'm positioning it because I've already got my main circles done. Now I'm going to fill in. So I'm looking for my negative space. I do have to remember how I clicked, but you're going to be able to see right away if it's going to accidentally overlap or not. down and then click because this was a one click and it's going to line up perfectly right there. So I did this one a while ago and now I can come back and fill in and add two and click. And click and I can keep filling in all the way around. It allows you so much functionality. It allows you to go in there and absolutely play. But it all starts with the first, the first circle. What do you want to do first? What look are you going for? And how does that fit in the pie piece? So here I've got a butterfly. Fit in between the two. 
if I took it down a little bit further, it would hang over a little bit more into my other, see how it's hanging over just a little bit here? That looks pretty good. It's hanging just a little bit, but I think we're gonna be okay. Put my paper down. My sticky grid holds it in place. And let's do Do a oh, there it is! My little stamp that I was looking for. So it's not about math, and it's really not even about alignment because the tool aligns it for you. It's about working inside the pie pieces. to where it makes your heart happy. And one click. And by the time I'm done, I'll have a whole circle of my butterflies. Click. And I just keep walking it all the way around. And then I decide if I want to add anything to it. Butterfly there, butterfly there. Um, little flowers. Is that going to be too close? Mm, I think that's going to be too close. Let's find another little flower. Cute little leaf there. I don't know, you just, you literally just start to build. Once you've got that down, it becomes it becomes a building tool. Down, rotate.
down, rotate, one click, because that's what I did for everything else. And you just keep going. But what if you wanted to use somebody else's stamps that weren't necessarily designed for this tool? These stamps were designed to go with this tool. What if I wanted to do something else? Hmm. I mean, because we've done some good playing. We've absolutely done some fun playing. And I think we now have the idea down, right? of how to make it work or <laughs> where's the one if you go too big and they overlap so let's start again from the very beginning because now I'm going to take somebody else's stamps and I'm going to make them work. So, we're gonna start as if we started from the very beginning. Hey everybody, I'm Stacy, and this is the new stamp and spin tool. Pull it out, just like we're starting from the very beginning. I'm gonna open it up. I'm going to say the directions. Well, lots of languages, but probably not the best. Not because they didn't want to, but well, space is an issue. I'm going to say we really need to highlight those grids. Hard to see. They're, they're, when you get it to your house, you may be able to see them just fine as you're doing it yourself. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the circle first. So the one that rotates is the one I'm gonna mark. And I'm only gonna mark from the, from the point that has this little area in here where you grab to rotate. I'm gonna mark from that point out. And I'm gonna do it. for all of my little turns, all of my 45 degree. Now that I've got all my 45 degrees done, on the little spin, on the little wheel, the, the part that moves, I'm gonna come back and draw on the top. Now remember, this is to help you lift it up, not to separate these two. That is a big do not do. So now I'm just gonna go draw all the way straight line and a straight line. I'm just gonna follow the grid that's on there and a straight line, or as straight as I can get it. It's just a guide to tell me where my pie pieces are. You know, growing up, I have two sisters and a brother. We, we don't have any contact with each other, but I do have two sisters and a brother. They're a little bit old, well, they're quite a bit older than I am. Oh, look at I'm kind of schmoozed it. I don't wanna schmooze. I'm gonna take and clean that up because I kind of schmoozed it. So a little bit of alcohol, 
hand sanitizer. Clean it off if you decide you don't want the grids anymore, the lines anymore. I'm going to go back in and draw those. So I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to go back in and draw those. Better. So my sister, well, when I was young, my eldest sister, Denise, and again, I, I don't see them anymore. Um, she loved pie. This is how I, this is how I came to the, how to do this. <laughs> so when I was young, yes, I have two sisters and a brother and we don't see each other. They've walked away a long time ago, but, and they are much older than me. But when I was young, we had pie for dessert a lot. <laughs> I don't know, maybe cake wasn't the thing in my family. Birthdays, we had cake. But other than that, maybe pies were just easy to fix. I don't know. But my sister Denise, my eldest sister Denise, her favorite pie was lemon meringue pie. Love lemon meringue pie. And she would sit there and she would like take the smallest little bites, like working down the meringue into the lemon curd. And it, I mean, she could take an hour to eat one slice of lemon meringue pie. And as kids, at some point, and now I was much, I'm much younger, mind you, like at least 10 years younger, my brother and sister would get annoyed with her and they would take her their fork and they would just dig into her pie. So when I saw this, that's what I thought. These are pie shapes. And if you encroach into another piece of pie, well, you gotta work with it a little differently. So, for me, putting those pie shapes in red just made sense. And then, because they then have the, the here's your pie shapes and here are your rings. One, two, three. I'm going to go back with my black. I'm going to highlight those. I'm just going to just go right around. And then we're going to get into somebody else's stamps that are not Sizzix. And you might be a little surprised by them. So I'm just going to draw my circles. And that way I know what my pie pieces look like. Now there will come a time where you are so comfortable with this tool that you're going to experiment and go way outside the pie pieces. But to get you started, I wanted to keep it true to what it's supposed to do. So I'm just drawing my circle and it's not exact. It's just a guide. That's all I'm looking for is to help guide me along. And where the opening is, I don't have to draw anything. So what if I were to take, again, these are meant to lift, not to separate. What if I was to take Tim Holtz? He just released Stampers Anonymous, right? What if I was to take some of Tim's stamps and work with them? Now they're red rubber, they're not clear. Will they work? I think they might. So let's see where he fits. I think, I think he fits all the way at the top. Look at that cute little hand. So he fits from side to side. Now he's encroaching down a little bit, but that's okay. He's still in my pie shape. He's not going outside of my lines. So what if we do this in, do we want to do it all in black? 
How do we feel about doing it all in black? Or colors. Alright, let's do it in colors. So, because he's just in one pie piece. I just rotate him once. Zoop, just like that. Ink him up again. Did you know you could use this with red rubber or gray rubber or white rubber stamps? This tool is an everybody come play in my sandbox tool. Rotate. Now, Tim might not be your style, but I wanted to show you that you are not limited as to what stamps you can use. Rotate. Are you thinking about all the stamps you currently own? All they have to do is fit somehow in these pie shapes. If they extend over, then you're going to have to click more than once. If they fit inside, then it's a one click, a one click turn. But all you're going to play with is white paper to figure it all out. Nope, see, I didn't rotate. It was going to click. It would just land right on top of the original and just do a double stamp. And what tool do you have to own to make this work? You have to own the stencil and stamp platform, the stencil and stamp tool. This adapts to it. And last, hmm. Now what if I were to take Hmm. I'll just take just a little bit of my chocolate brown, dark chocolate here, and just go maybe just hit just a little bit. And then come back and over the top. It's going to line up because it's a positioner. Oh, look at that! Ho ho ho! Look at me go. Oh, I just did that one. Oh, well. Now it's extra done. <laughs> Some of them will be a little darker than other, but I think I like it with a little bit of the brown going on.
all the way around. So, now I've done a huge wreath with Tim and I've doubled the color. So I've got a little bit of green and a little bit of brown to grunge it up just a little bit in a huge wreath. Don't know what I'll do with it, but let's keep going. Another piece of paper. And I think I'm just gonna stick with my brown and let's just do my huge wreath one more time because then we're going to layer inside the wreath. One, oh yeah, that looks good. Rotate. Two. Three. Now, if ever I accidentally put my platform in the wrong place and I go down, I'm going to clearly see, oh no, I'm not lining it up. It's already, it's off my paper. Then I know I just need to move it back over. But if I move it too far over here and I go, oh no, it's given me another, it's not lining up. All you have to do is find the space where you started and there you go. I think the biggest challenge with this tool is understanding the pie pieces. I think people think that it involves math and it doesn't. It's a visual thing. You'll be able to see before you commit to what you're stamping whether it's going to work or not. And in a future YouTube, we're going to get super technique-y with it. So I've almost got my Tim all the way around, and then I'm going to grab another Tim stamp. Red rubber, not a problem at all. Done. Okay, let's grab another 10. Let's see what else do I like. I think the little hat is cute. So let's put this one back. And let's see where the hat fits. It fits pretty good there. I think I'm going to put it close there. So I'm just lining it up where I think I want it. It's going to fall in between two of my red lines. Let's try that. So cute and rotate once. Rotate once. Rotate once. Rotate once. 
rotate. And then what else besides the hat do we like? Okay, what else we got besides the hat? Hmm, the little light bulb's cute. Where can we fit the little light bulb? So if I put him, if I put the little light bulb straight, he's inside my pie piece, but he's right on top of my hat. What if I rotate my little light bulb? So that he's at a little bit of an angle. Well, I'm going to give it a whirl. I've got my light bulb at a little bit of an angle, so he kind of fits between the two lines. Let's see what we get. Mm. Oh, go for it. Rotate once. Ooh, Stacy. <laughs> Rotate once. Rotate once. You just have to trust the process. And we'll see what we get. Worst case scenario, it's white paper. Rotate once. Rotate once. Rotate once. And magically, you just trust the process. Look at how cute is this? But what if I want to fill in more space? Okay, what else on that stamp set do we like, folks? Um, hmm. We have the... We have the mustache, but that might be too big. Oh, don't get red all over everything. We might have the mustache, but it might be too big. That's a little big. How about a word?
word hello. Just a note. And hello in the middle, that would be cute. All right, so I've got I've got just a note on empty space right there. Let's see what happens. Close it up. Just a note, rotate. <laughs> so I generally don't do anything with Tim Holtz product. It's, it's not my kind of vibe, but it's so <laughs> stinking cute. <laughs> All of you that have ordered it, they came in and we started shipping. Now you need to have this tool. <laughs> Trust the process. So I don't know how the Altenew tool works in comparison to this and you may want to check that out I do know that there is a price difference but you do also have to have the stencil and stamp tool but then you have the stencil stamp you have the stencil tool the stamp tool and a stamp and spin tool for less than, I believe, the Altenew. It is heavyweight. It is made well. Oh, <laughs> look at me go. <laughs> and then what if I put the hello? Or do I want to adjust the note, adjust a note right in the center? Okay, so stinking cute. Now I would probably cut this into, into backgrounds, <laughs> but easily done. The tool has options and this is just the beginning for me. This is just a way for me to show you how it works so you can start it's all about these pie pieces and how we're going to utilize them and the little pieces of pie inside the little areas inside sometimes your stamps are going to go outside the little pie pieces and that's like my brother and sister going and grabbing some of my sister's denise's lemon meringue pie so you're going to have to work with it a little differently but because it's clear you're going to be able to move and see exactly what you're doing before you lay it down and press it is made of it is, it is a heavy acrylic, so there's weight to this without question. My biggest concern is that everybody who took it out the first time wanted to pull these apart, and that is not what you do. Those are meant to use 
to lift up. It's also meant to hold. You can put your finger there and hold to do your, your turning. So easy. Works with the stencil and stamp tool. Is required to have the stencil and stamp tool. And then you just, you start. Think about all the lovely stamps you have. And again, if we go too far in, where's that Tim set? If you go too far in, See how that is between outside of two red lines. One, and then if I rotate and I stamp, it's going to stamp on top of my my light bulb I would have to move it twice to make sure that it doesn't so if I there we go if I stamp it it's gonna stamp right on top of my other light bulb and then right on top of my other light bulb and that's not the look I'm going for. That's not what I'm looking to do. And if all I have to do is rotate it, either bring it up higher So it fits in between my lines. Rotate. Because it's in between the two red lines, it's a single rotate. So there's no, there's no, there's no real anything more that you need than your stamps, your inks, and your paper. If you've got the two tools, you're ready to get going. This isn't like a die cutting machine where you've got to be very careful what sandwich you use and what dies you're using and what paper you're using. This is a everybody come play with me and you're going to look super, super rock star because I'm easy. As far as tools go, it's one of the easiest and most mm, well-rounded, haha, <laughs> rounded, <laughs> no pun intended, tools that I've seen where anybody and everybody can be successful. So now I've made my perfect little wreath and I can come back in and fill in and add the little mustache and, or I could rotate. And instead of having my light bulb go this way, I 
I can have it go this way. Push my paper down so it doesn't move. Sticky grid is holding it in place. And it's still between my red lines. So it's still a one click. And there's no guessing about the click. You immediately feel it. I don't know what possessed me to pull a Tim Holtz stamp set. I guess just because they released this week, I thought maybe this would give you some things, some ideas of how to incorporate them with the tool. Look at that. And you just get into a rhythm and a pattern of it. Oh, that's so cute. But I so want to use that mustache. Oh, let's see if it'll work. Should I put them on top? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, why not? <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> And a click. I should have put a top hat on the darn it. And a click. But you can see how fast you get into a rhythm and you just go. And a click. And a click. Thoughts and theories. You're like, really? I'm like, yeah, sorry, I'm going to finish it. Thoughts and theories. Click. Thoughts and theories, click.
might use just about everything in the set. I wonder if Tim knows about this tool. If not, he should. Somebody tell him. <laughs> Super cute. Bam. My ode to Tim Holtz. <laughs> so do you like the light bulbs this way? Do you like the light bulbs this way? We don't necessarily like the light bulbs this way when they're too close to each other. Look at how much fun we have had and how easy it is to use. We started just simple. I just wanted you to see how to build the, the, the main wreath. And then we can go in and start adding different things. I've got beautiful, beautiful samples that will show you how to add all the different elements. But then we got, we got cute. <laughs> so it is a new tool from Sizzix. It is exclusive here at Scrapbooking Made Simple for the next several weeks. It is on sale. It is an investment. You now have the knowledge to decide, is this for you or not? Are you all about this or are you like, meh, I'm not so sure. Here, I did this one a little bit earlier. Just playing. Now I can cut it down, I can crop it. It doesn't have to stay circle. And you will see that in lots of the samples, we don't keep them circle at all. Isn't this absolutely darling? So cute, just darling. So what's on sale this week? Well, we're going to go ahead and have the main platform because you have to have the stencil and stamp tool. Mandatory, you've got to have this tool to make the stamp and spin work. This is an adapter that clicks right into it, fits right in, it's not even a click. And I drew the lines. You make a decision whether you like having those lines or not. For me, it's easier to see. And if I ever want to get rid of them, all I have to do, all I have to do is take hand sanitizer. And wipe them away. But for me, it's easier with them than without. I leave you to make that decision. So. If you already have the stencil and stamp tool, you are ahead of the game. If you don't, it is on sale. We have the best value on it anywhere. And then we have the stamp and spin tool. We've got it open stock, but we also have it as part of the bundle where you get all of the Sizzix stamps to go with by Lisa Jones. And I'm going to tell you, Lisa is an absolutely lovely person. I'm in, I'm in like heaven over this font set that she did. I'm loving this set. But then she did the fruit and she did the floral and she did the butterflies. And these are all meant, because these will fit the centers, these are all meant to work with the stamp, uh, the stamp and spin tool. 
Now, the regular price for this bundle would be $99.95. We've got it for $69.97. But only during this YouTube Yummy. Once this week is over, this goes back up to regular price. And then if you loved the stamps, but not the tool, we did an I Want It All bundle on just the stamps for you. And then we have my inks that will be available in the YouTube Yummy. I have 12 colors. I have coordinating re-inkers for them. I use these all the time now because, well, they're my go-to inks. So here are some of the colors. There's 12. There's an I Want It All. They're all on sale. The re-inkers are on sale. Absolutely. We'll put the sticky grid replacements on sale just in case you need more. Sizzix sells it in a five pack. So your, your stamp and spin tool does not come with the, with the base platform. This is separate. This is the stencil and stamp tool. You buy this separately. This will coordinate and fit with it. Two different items. Your stencil and stamp tool will come with one sheet of sticky grid. Eventually you'll need to replace it, so we'll put those on sale for you. And what, oh, and the paper. Maybe we have the paper on sale for you too? I'll check and see. If not, remind me I need to put the paper on sale. And this was the Sizzix Super Smooth that I was using today. Super Smooth. Now samples. That's it, that's really all that's on sale. Cause this is a do's and don'ts. So it's really about the do's and the don'ts. Let's take a look at some of the samples. Get ready to swoon. So the background, see she did a big wreath and then cut it down to size and then smaller wreath. She die cut that out and popped it up. This is Susan B. Cards. This is lovely. And then we have Celebrate Your Day. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? This is Brit. Oh, Brit. Yum. Love this. And then we have a big hug. And look at this. It's just part just a portion of how clever is that we could take just a portion of and use it and she's got the big hug sentiment and this is kelly kelly kitteringham i'm getting better at it kelly i'm trying it's beautiful And look at this, look at the wood grain, the faux wood grain. And here, fussy cut out, bless your pea picking heart. And all the little, so started with the four, the four lemons, and then all the little pieces were filled in. And this is Tanya Brooks. Beautiful. I bet this is Brit. Oh no, it's Tanya. Britt usually sends envelopes too. So here we have Tanya Brooks at Tanya Brooks 2. So again, did a whole background and then just stamped one. We're the perfect pair. And I love that she did the envelope too. So it doesn't have to stay round. Look at how beautiful is this. This was with the Lisa Jones stamp. And then they cut out a window. This is so pretty. And again, off the side. This is Kelly Kitteringham. That's a nice size card. And how sweet is this birthday wishes with the lemons all the way around on a craft core by Dana.
and then sending a smile again start with the four and then everything else was filled in with the stamp and spin tool give yourself an hour oh isn't this clever tanya brooks okay super cute super clever love that so one two three four and then she filled in with a few of the little flowers and then the flowers all the way around. So she did two wreaths, but put it on a regular card. Super cute. And then let's grab some of these. So here, darling little box. Oh, of course. Okay, so is this Tim, this is Tanya. Is this Tim's little matchbook? darling little box so she's stamped all the way around she did the butterfly she colored it in and then she made a little vignette inside oh tanya wow well done you love it wow see how pretty sending birthday wishes stamped and then came back and stamped and then came back and stamped and just filled it in. And this one's by Kelly Kitteringham. And then let's see what we've got here. Look at how sweet is this? Just a little love you, just a little cute little card done with one of the fronds from the, all the way on the inside and then a, the little butterflies to go on. This was done by Honorary SMS Girl Catherine. Really cute. I love this one. Mary, oh my gosh, Mary, this is beautiful. Beautiful and simple and just easy. And again, just filling in some space. Started with the four butterflies or maybe she started with the greenery and then came in and filled the negative space. And again, this one is stunning. This is by Honorary SMS Girl Katie. Look at the beautiful, she just filled it all in with the stamp and spin tool. And here we have Yvette who added sentiments. Hmm, and here we have Tanya Brooks, who used a uh, Eileen Hole die and then took all the little fronds in that stamp set from Lisa Jones and just put them all in there. So she didn't use the stamp and spin at all, but gosh, that's darling. Sending you a big hug, Yvette. This is beautiful, honorary SMS girl, Yvette. This is gorgeous, beautiful. And here we have one off the side by Kelly Kitteringham. That almost rolled off my tongue. That almost was like perfect. Here we have Britt. Brit Bass, look at the colors. And again, she did the big wreath and hers slightly overlap and then she did sm a smaller butterfly and then she just pounded it with color, woo hoo. Mm, this one's so pretty. This is Tanya Brooks, lovely. So the Stampin' Spin is new. It's just launching. It's launching here first. And it takes your stencil and stamp tool to the next level if this is something you are liking. It's pretty easy to use, but you need to sit with it 
and you need to give it some some love and some attention and some white paper and some black ink and have no expectations at all and just sit and learn your learn your pie shapes i'm not asking you to do math i'm asking you to learn how to use the pie shapes whether you outline it like i did or not once you get it you got it oh yvette this is beautiful that's just lovely as is this one brit this is brit bass this is beautiful And then we've got one on, uh, oh, look at it stands. Look how cute is this? This is Eva, oh, this is Catherine. Catherine, this is darling. Congrats on your big day. Honorary SMS girl, Catherine. That's so cute. And then we've got another big, wow. Kelly Kinneringham. This is a hand it to you card, at least here in the United States. And then let's see what we've got over here. Mm, so pretty. Brit, she made the card base in the circle. And Susan B cards. I love just the pop of color on this one. Everything else in the black and white and then bam. And again, she did the wreath, but she's made it into background paper. Sending you a big hug. Boy, are you ever. Is this Kelly? Yes, it is. She's an international maker. They do big cards over there, so she's sending a big hug. And then we've got a few left. So look at how that was done. This is very clever, Catherine. So she's got everything. She's made background paper out of this by using the stamp and spin. And then this is lovely. And this is Kelly again. Love these colors. This is just beautiful. She masked that off when she stamped. That was clever. Hmm. That gave me an idea. And then last but not least, inside a beautiful frame. Isn't that gorgeous? So, I'm hoping by this class, you've seen how these are the basics. This isn't taking you into anything too far technique-y. There's time for that. You need to, we need to start at the very beginning. And this is the beginning, the beginning of the stamp and spin tool. I can, well, my, my own brain already knows where I want to go with this tool, but I had to play with it. I had to practice with it. I had to say, is this worth the money? For some of you, you're going to be saying absolutely. It adds another dimension, a whole nother element to stamps you may already have. In fact, I'll probably be using this when I launch my May collection because I have a stamp set that this is going to work perfect with. So hang tight. <laughs> I think I'm going to use it in May with my, with my next collection for Sizzix. I leave it to you. Hopefully I was able to explain it to you in a way that makes sense, in a way that you're like, I get it now. And once you start, your creativity will take over. It's inevitable. You think you start with just one little wreath and then all of a sudden you're making squares and background papers and, and you're just, you're enjoying the process. It is a little bit therapeutic. Once you get into it, you don't want to stop and all of a sudden you look at all of your little stamps that have little icon stamps. You look at them in a whole new way. Oh, I can I can stamp and spin that. Yes, yes you can. So, 
Thank you for being with me today. I hope I was able to, again, bring some education to you so you feel confident in either making this purchase, whether it be with me right now or somebody else in a few weeks or somebody else in a few months, you feel confident in it or you feel confident enough to say, nope, not for me. And that is okay too. There's something for everybody. Like I'm not the biggest, I'm not the biggest Tim Holtz fan for stamps, but it's cute. <laughs> Never in my wildest dreams thought I would pull a Tim Holtz stamp to use, but I like it. <laughs> okay. I'm Stacy. This is Scrapbooking Made Simple, and this is a comprehensive do's and don'ts class of the brand new Sizzix Stamp and Spin Tool. Hit the like button, hit the like button, and don't forget to post a comment on how we should divvy up a thousand dollars of gift cards since we hit one million subscribers. Until Monday, I will see you Monday, Monday, Monday. I have a special event at 9 a.m. in the morning. 49 and Market, their debut collection with Sizzix is launching. We're going to launch it with them. First thing in the morning, I have got, I've got two. Oh my gosh, the bundles I have for you and the free gifts I have for you. Woo! And then I'll be back Monday afternoon for our Make It Monday event. Tuesday is Take Two Tuesday. Thursday is new for you Thursday, and then we roll right into Saturday all over again. So again, I'm Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Thanks for joining me, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to bring these products to you, hopefully in a way that makes you feel confident. All right, bye everybody.